Hey friends, welcome back for another Friday Faith Foundation episode. We are continuing our series today for Mental Health Awareness Month, which is May, and we're focusing on scripture that can help you when you navigate anxiety. What do you do when you feel anxiety? Well, the simple yet not so simple answer is you cast your anxiety on him. And that will be what I present to you today. I am Robin Graham, your host, a business growth strategist and coach, and I am thrilled that you are here. Listen, as we continue on this series for mental health, um, I want to encourage you to share these episodes with friends or family members who may be experiencing mental health challenges or trying to navigate anxiety, depression, or any other form of mental health challenges. We aren't meant to navigate these alone. It takes a team. It can be so trying, overwhelming, and frightening. So if you find peace in these messages, I ask that you please share them with other people. Share them on your social platforms. Let's increase the awareness and decrease the stigma. Most of us experience anxiety from one point in time or another in our lives. And as we go through life as entrepreneurs and business owners, we can have ebbs and flows of anxiety, whether we've had it our entire life or we are just experiencing it because of all of the stress, maybe even burnout, maybe just the chaos of trying to run a business, manage a team, whatever that case may be. Sometimes anxiety can appear when there are hormonal changes. Sometimes it can appear when there are life changes, relationship changes. So whether you have experienced signs and symptoms of anxiety throughout your life or not, it can happen at any given point in time. So take this information and put it in your back pocket and know that it's there for you to refer to should anxiety rear its ugly head at any point in time as you're navigating life and business. Today's focus is going to be on 1 Peter 5, 7. If you have ever asked the question, what do you do when you feel anxiety? And you have put that question in your Google search bar. This episode is especially for you. 1 Peter 5, 7 in the King James Version states, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. In the NIV Bible, 1 Peter 5, 7 reads, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The word cast comes from the Greek word epiripto. Now, I am not going to claim that I speak fluent Greek. I do not. So I hope I'm saying these words right. If I'm wrong and you are an expert, then please feel free to call me out and tell me exactly how I should be saying them. But for now, we're going to go with the flow because I'm going to do the best I can. This word, epiripto, is a compound word. So it consists of the word epi, which means upon or on top of something. Ripto means to throw or hurl something with great force. Okay, so just for a second, envision taking anxiety outside of yourself and hurling it at something, just hurling it, getting it out of your body. How much peace does that give you? It's cleansing just to envision getting it all out of our minds and our bodies. The word cast comes from the Greek word, or no, I said, I said that already. We did epiripto. Now let me move to the word care. The word care in Greek is meremna, and it means anxiety. It can also refer to other hardships, complicated or unpleasant circumstances, um, negative experiences, turmoil, or just trouble in your everyday life. It could be reflecting your business, your family, relationships, your health any number of circumstances. It's not limited to one or the other. 
casting your anxiety on him means that you can give all your anxieties, all your troubles, all your burdens to Jesus. Nothing is too great or too small for him. He wants you to bring everything to him because he cares for you. In the King James Version, he the word that Paul uses is careth, C-A-R-E-T-H. And that comes from the word malai, M-E-L-E-I, which means to be aware, concerned, thoughtful, and to give meticulous attention to something or someone. So 1 Peter 1, 5, 1 Peter 5, 7 actually assures us that Christ gives us very special, very special, meticulous attention. He knows everything about us. He sees all that we experience and go through. And he wants us to lay it all at his feet. Now, Satan is going to scheme and he's going to try to convince you that God doesn't want to hear from you. He doesn't want to be bothered by your prayers about your stress and anxiety and your burdens. But he's got bigger things to worry about. But guess what? Satan has no authority over you. Zero zip zilch. No power or authority over you. He cannot interfere with Christ's incredible love and attention for you. Christ wants you to cast your burdens on him. Trust him. Yield your concerns and watch as he works in your life. Before you can know what to do, when you feel anxiety, you have to be able to recognize it. You have to understand or recognize what the symptoms or signs of anxiety actually are. They're different. They're unique to everyone. Some people may have one, others may have multiple, and there could easily be a combination of any number of these. These symptoms or signs include Increased irritability, racing heartbeat, lack of focus, stomach aches or pains, headaches, shortness of breath, trouble sleeping, excessive fatigue, inability to do things you used to be able to do, abnormal fears that prevent you from doing things or moving forward, a lack of appetite or unusual cravings for unhealthy food like sugar or salt or both. Once you recognize the symptoms that you're experiencing physically or mentally or emotionally, you can begin to identify the triggers. What is the trigger that is causing you to feel this way, causing you to experience these symptoms? It could be multiple triggers, but typically there's at least one. There are many strategies available to navigate anxiety. I love my five or my seven C's. Catch those negative anxious thoughts, challenge them, confess the doubt, the lack of trust and the fear. Change those thoughts to the positive alternative. Collaborate with the Holy Spirit to transform your mind to believe the identity that Christ has for you or that you have in him. You will begin to control those thoughts more effectively, more timely, and you will develop more confidence. You can learn more about those seven C's in episode 320, which I will link in the show notes for you. So in addition to the seven C's, there are other things that you can use as treatment or to manage or navigate your anxiety. And those include therapy, medication, prayer, gratitude, movement, exercise, creativity, and a healthy diet. These are all integral components of managing anxiety. But our focus today is on using scripture to recognize that we don't have to bear the weight of our anxiety and our cares and our concerns, that Christ is willing and more than able to take them and carry them for us. I do want to say that 
anxiety is not an excuse to avoid following your calling. It's not an excuse to live unhappily. Happiness comes from within us. We have a choice to navigate these things that are holding us back or causing us to feel, feel less than. Anxiety is not an excuse to be angry or aggressive or to just live plain miserably. It's also not an excuse for someone to treat you poorly if they are experiencing anxiety, experiencing anxiety. So be aware if someone is suddenly more irritable than they used to be, if they have sudden outbursts of anger or are treating you poorly for things that you don't even recognize or you don't think should be causing such a big reaction, maybe they need to listen to this episode or maybe you can very kindly and gently urge them to get the help that they need to navigate their anxiety. Sometimes just stress can cause that. So another verse that I want to share with you is Colossians 3.15. And it reads, let the peace of Christ in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Approach him with gratitude. Be thankful for the beautiful, powerful identity that you have in him. And accept his peace as you lay your burdens at his feet. When you feel anxious or doubt, he wants you to cast those feelings on him. He wants to carry them for you and give you his peace, his peace that is beyond our understanding. And I want you to remember that he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never breaks his promises. When you think about Moses, God asked him to rescue the Israelites who had been victims of slavery for over 400 years. Moses was afraid. He was anxious. He didn't think he'd have the right words to say or that people would listen to him. And when he asked God, who do I say sent me? God said, I am who I am. Tell them, I, I am who I am sent you. Proof that he doesn't change is found in John, the Gospel of John, when Jesus said to the disciples that long before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I am. So we hear it multiple times that he is the great I am. He never changes. He is with us before the dawn of time. And he is with us now, and he will be with us through eternity. One last verse that I want to leave you with is Romans 8, 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Turn your anxiety over to Christ. Cast it on him. And let the Holy Spirit lead your mind to give you strength, knowledge, wisdom, on how to navigate the anxiety so that it has no power over you. It is an absolute must to navigate anxiety if you're experiencing it, especially if you want to have an abundance mindset as you live your life, raise your children, build relationships, and build your business. I assure you that <laughs> this what I'm telling you today has made a world of difference for me. I'm not sure I would be here. Definitely would not be having a, a, a podcast or, or have created a podcast or be speaking from this platform if it weren't for what I've learned in scripture and what my identity in Christ is and how incredibly the Holy Spirit works in me to transform my mind as we're reminded in Romans 12 too. But as the great neuroscientist Caroline Leaf says, science is only now catching up to scripture. That is how miraculous your mind is, friends. It can be transformed and you can change those neural pathways through neuroplasticity. 
and you can discover peace, hope, and joy, and live the purposeful life that Christ has called you to. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you, and it's my prayer for you that you're able to hear this and read the scripture verses and find tremendous comfort and peace.